As soon as you start working on a timeline within DaVinci Resolve and you drop literally any piece of media on that timeline, that timeline's frame rate becomes locked and you can no longer change the frame rate of that timeline. Which is annoying if you've accidentally set that timeline to the incorrect frame rate. But do not fear. There is an easy fix. There's two, in fact, actually, which I'm going to show you right now, as well as some other essentials in, you know, that are kind of useful. Welcome, ladies and gents, to one minute mon ma one day. One minute ma one day. So the very first thing I recommend you do is just do a super quick backup just in case anything goes wrong. Find your timeline within the media pool. Mine's right here. It's the one with the little red tick that shows that it's the current timeline you have open. Right click and there is an option to create a timeline backup. Give that a click, give it a name, click create. Now if anything goes wrong, like I've accidentally deleted all of this, I can go to that timeline, right click, restore the timeline backup and now we have a new timeline that has everything back on. Absolutely worth doing that if you're ever going to mess with any of this stuff just to be on the safe side. So with that done, now let's change our frame rate. We're going to right click on an empty space, go to timelines and create new timeline or we could use the control N shortcut. We can give this a name if we want to. Then we need to untick the use project settings, go to format and we can change the timeline frame rate of this new timeline. So let's go with 24. Then click create. Now, from this little drop down menu at the top here, you can see all of the timelines within your current project. So I'm going to go to my 4K30. I'm then simply going to highlight everything on this timeline by doing a Control and A, and then a Control C. Then I can switch over to this other timeline, and then Control and V to do a paste. And we now have a new timeline at the correct frame rate. But there is another method. I like this one. Whether you want to use it or not, it's up to you. Now, you absolutely must do a backup before you attempt this method because it is slightly riskier. But it's very similar in principle. You just don't need to actually create that additional timeline. So instead, what we're going to do is select all on the timeline. So Control and A like we did before. But this time, we're going to do a Control and X, which is a cut. That's going to cut everything from the timeline and essentially save it to your clipboard. Now, because this timeline is now empty, we can find that timeline within the media pool. Right click, timelines, timeline settings. Make sure to untick the use project settings if it is ticked. And then you can change this timeline frame rate. So let's set this to something else. Then click OK. Then on that timeline, we simply need to do a control V to paste once again paste all of the media back onto our newly updated timeline, and we're good to go. Now this video is over a minute anyway, so I've got another quick tip regarding backups, which I'm going to throw in anyway because it's useful. If you've panicked and gone, oh no, I've deleted everything. Do not fear. Because we made a backup, you can actually restore deleted backups as well. So click on these three little dots. There is an option, deleted timeline backups. Give that a click and you'll see all of the timeline backups you have deleted. So we've got one here called 4K Backup Backup. Let's go to that one. That's the correct time. Restore that. Boom. We now have that back. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>